best practice guide when cabling through congested or partially blocked duct. Some sequences in this video have been shortened or speeded up for ease of viewing. During parts of the video, barriers have been opened or removed to facilitate filming. In a live situation, full enclosed guarding must be in place. Here you can see the engineer rodding from the customer's premises towards the CBT using a standard Cobra rod and bullet attachment. He's hit an obstruction which is causing the rods to bend. Let's pull the rods back and try something different. You can see how silted the end of the rod is. Let's remove the existing bullet attachment and try something else. As you can see, he's replaced it with another attachment. It's called the Lead to Cash Rod Ends Flexible Tip Assembly. Look at how flexible it is. He got past the first blockage with this attachment, which seemed to work very well. We've hit another blockage. Let's pull back the rods and try something else. See how silted the attachment is again. This indicates that mud or silt must have entered the duct. Let's try something else. We borrowed a bucket and poured in some water to help soften the silt. At this point, we tried a piece of slippery fish cable. This usually works very well at overcoming obstructions and debris in the duct, and especially between joint boxes, so we thought we'd give it a try here. Sadly, not this time, Let's try something else. Now we'll try the small rods. Rod duct number five with an attachment rod 1A as shown here. The rods are a little more rigid and usually help overcome congestion and small blockages. Oops, spoke too soon. We've hit that first obstruction in the duct bend. We're not done yet, let's try something else. Now let's use the attachment rod 3A. It's flexible and will help us get round the duct bend and through the swept tee. You can see with the attachment 3A, we've made great progress through the duct bend and also the swept tee in the street. For one last bit of oomph, 
we can use the adapter rod number seven to attach a larger rod onto the smaller ones. This is ideal when rodding between boxes, but in this case, we are using it to get through the final few inches of the blockage. It should be noted that the larger duct rods one and two will not fit into or through curved sections of duct 56. Once the rods enter the duct, you must stop pushing. As you can now see, the blockage has been cleared. It's time to withdraw the larger rods and continue with the smaller rods once more. Now the final blockage is clear, we can continue to rod towards the joint box, ready to rope the customer lead in. Here you can see, we have now managed to get through all of the blockages and provided a rope ready for cabling. For properties fed via a direct duct from the joint box to the customer, Always try rodding from both ways if you hit an obstruction. You never know, you might just get through. Obstructions between boxes, some best practice hints and tips. As always, we are going to start with the Cobra rods and the bullet attachment. Meeting some congestion or an obstruction now we're going to try the Cobra rods with the lead to cash rod ends flexible tip assembly to see if this gets through. Having tried the Cobra rod with both attachments, it's time to switch to the solid rods in this case with the attachment 3A as shown here. Cabling engineers have told us that using large cable ties, either singular or doubled up, really can help to overcome congested or drop duct scenarios. Install the bullet, attachment rod 1A, and then the cable ties as shown by cutting and taping them into place. Here you can clearly see the modified rod fits easily into the duct and travels over the existing cables. With heavily congested duct, try placing a slight bend at the end of one of the rods as shown here. This will help the rod surf over the cables or any slight misalignment of the duct sections. Here you can see we've hit an obstruction. Pull the rods back slightly and twist the rods in either a small clockwise or counterclockwise motion. Try again and repeat the action until the rods find a way through. As per the previous section, we can also use the larger rods number one and two to give us a bit more oomph. 
screw on the attachment rod number seven and then attach the larger duct rod number two. You can see here that the larger rods give the engineer a greater pushing force. Further guidance about Slippery Fish Cable and the duck camera can be found on the Chief Engineer website. Blockage scenario when you've tried everything and still can't get through. In our last scenario we are trying to cable between two joint boxes when we hit a blockage in the duct. We identify the rod position in the mouth of the duct before marking them with tape as shown here. Now we withdraw the rods from the duct before laying them out on the ground. As we pull the rods, we line up the tape with the edge of the box to give us our blockage position and mark the end of the rods as shown. Now we need to rod from the box on the other side of the blockage until we hit the obstruction as you can see here. Repeat by identifying the rod position in the duck mouth and taping the rods as shown. Withdraw the rods and carefully walk them out from the box as shown until the tape marker is reached. Now mark this position. In this case the two measures match up and we mark a cross on the ground. Rope all clear sections whilst you are on site for the customer's provision. Rod blockages from both directions and follow local processes for tracking and locating the blockage before passing for a civils activity.